Hey guys, Tonster back. Got a nice tanker for you today in the M4190. This is a tank I've, I've uh, played a lot because I've had it for a long time. It is a light, but it's kind of a pseudo medium. It's got good DPM and not very good camo. It does retain its camo on the move, but it's the camo is bad enough that uh, some mediums will have better camo like the Barask, uh, depending on the setup. So I don't play this as a light very often. I have two loadouts. One is a DPM loadout and the other is this loadout, which has CBS, low noise and, uh, and optics. And so um, this is kind of a non DPM setup. So let's go ahead and get started. We're on Redshire and we are on Encounter. Um, and we're just going to go to the middle and play as we normally do, try and pick up some spots in the middle and at least get an idea of where the enemy is going. Um, and so that's our plan. Now, with no, low noise exhaust, and I have a pretty good crew in this, it doesn't have terrible camo. It's just not up to the level of the very competitive light tanks such as the T, uh, the LT-832, the ELC even, um, even the Bat Chat I think has better camo and this is also a huge light tank so it's uh, it's very easy to get spotted in this thing and if you get spotted you are done. So we are picking up some uh, you know a few uh, spots and a little bit of assist. We're up to 700 assist here and they and they have a light tank that made a mistake, got stuck behind a building and he is rather ineffective in that position. So so we're just watching the map to see what's going to happen. Um, not a huge amount of stuff has been spotted yet. We'll see pretty quick that there are a lot of tanks on the heavy side right and we do not have very many so at this point I make the decision to run away bravely because this middle position is only good until the heavies take over the heavy side and I'm relatively certain that they're gonna do that as the enemy light is moving forward but he is intelligently sitting behind a building and I don't know if that building, uh, you can break it, but apparently not. So so I know the Mod 1 doesn't have great view range. And so fortunately, even though I fired there, I did not get lit. So, so now we're going to push back and we know that we're going to lose the heavy side. So what's the best thing we can do? Let's get in a position where we can spot these guys and cause trouble, be a pain in their neck. And run away anytime we want and that position is right here right I can I can run away from this position at any time that I want but we're not gonna run away from this position because we are spotting the vast majority of their hit points and their team so even though we're down um, about 3,000 hit points and it's gonna get worse now we're closer to 4,000 hit points and we're down a couple of tanks we are in a position to really assist our team and that's what we're going to do so um you got to be careful to stay behind the bush right i mean that's all that's part of the deal when you're playing light tanks i believe that these trees in front of us do give us some camo not a huge amount but a little bit and we're able to just kind of post up and uh spot these guys for our large amount of tank destroyers there's three tank destroyers in the middle and the udez 3 in the background and i decide because the strv 103 is a tough target that we should take him out and expose our position because again it doesn't really matter if we're spotted um, they can't come straight for us they have to stay in those buildings now one thing um, that uh, I did not realize is that I have gold loaded and I basically fire all my gold rounds this, this round because I'm not paying attention. So shame on me, but whatever, it's fine. I got, I think we still make credits on this. I don't remember for sure, but uh, 
the T95 is definitely looking at me and he is interested in me and I want nothing to do with him. <laughs> So I don't want them to shoot at me. I want something to do with them, but not to shoot at me. So what we're really trying to do is take out the tanks that are low health and help our team to stop this push, which it appears as if we have done. So, so now I want to push forward. Now, I really do not realize that I have heat loaded because heat does not go through walls and we're going to take a shot at the rear of this t95 because he is certainly attempting to get closer to his team because he's isolated right as we take a big hit from an su and don't even spot him for it now i'm i want him to turn around but obviously i do not want him to shoot me so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of work our way between the buildings and then once we're unspotted we can go anywhere we want, right? And where we want to go is over on the heavy side to gain some map control because we've had terrible map control this entire game. Now the lesson here um, from the enemy point of view as we get a luck lucky snapshot is that you do not want to try and cap the base capping the base is really not a very good idea so we're um if you can hear that music i apologize hopefully not but i've got the door shut but my son's outside so doing his thing so anyway um yeah we're just going to continue to try and get pot shots on these guys as much as possible um and they're they're predictable because they're in the base right and my position present prevents them from pushing up into these up and over this ridge which is problematic for the positions of of my teammates so it's really really good that we're able to do that able to kind of hold these guys uh, accountable and not allow them to push the ridge line again now it's 10 to 11 but we're doing our best we're putting in a lot of damage we've got 4,000 assists and we've got 1700 damage you're gonna see though that because of the shell velocity on these heat rounds and I don't realize that I'm firing them I am missing shots and so that's that's on me that one would have missed no matter what but uh, that's on me so this I think this shot basically is has no hope of going in it's gonna hit the upper plate and we're gonna continue to waste some shells here uh, I didn't say I was a perfect player but this is a pretty good game so so now it's 10 to 12 um, the the only isolated tank that I can see is that T95. So what I want to do is pretend I'm going one direction and come in from the other direction, right? That's just misdirection. And I realize that this LTTB may be on the ridge line somewhere, and I'm kind of expecting to get spotted, and there it happens, right? We do get spotted. We fire, and of course we miss horribly because we hit a bump, an undulation in the terrain the only thing that has is saving me here is that LTTB does not know that I have no backup if he knew I had backup he, or knew I didn't have backup rather he would have come over and killed me so now the UDES 03 uh, is uh, is coming to help and we are now out of gold rounds, which is kind of unfortunate since we're facing a T95. We just have to aim better. And that's that's basically what we're doing here. And so we're able to take out the T95 and the LTTB decides it's time to kind of help. But the problem is he, he comes too late. Now I've got backup in the form of that UDES. So my team, I will say has done a very good job of resetting the cap and now it's my turn I have to get in there and and complete some resets and you can see that we are making use of our uh, setup 
now because as I decide I'm going to take out the SU instead because he's a more dangerous target. But we're making use of our low, low noise exhaust in that we can spot these guys and they can't spot us. And he's probably, I don't know, 300 meters away. So, and th now it's just clean up. So the fact that they sat in the cap and did not attack us was um, was not a wise decision. They also gave up map control by completely pushing the heavy side. And had I not been there, they probably would have won this game. So it's always fun to play in games that you feel like you had a real effect in the game. And also games that, uh, that you... Uh, make use of your tank in the most efficient way you possibly can. So this UDES 03 is coming with me and this LTTB is a one shot and I figured if I missed then he might kill me and he might get away but I went with the UDES 03 because he had more hit points and I just wanted to make sure that uh, the guy didn't get away and somehow pull off some miracle win as a light tank. So uh, with only three of us alive, that was a distinct possibility. So so anyways, let's look at the after action report on this. Okay, here we are at the after action, and I titled this M4190 GF in 2024 because I don't have great success with this tank normally, uh, but we were able to move around the map enough to get our ace tanker. We got an Orlix medal, which is destroying two or more enemy tanks that uh are or tank destroyers that i think they got to be a tier higher yes that's exactly it and then we also got a top gun because we're killing low health targets and we weren't trying to steal ki kills there we were just trying to finish guys off so that our guys would stand a better chance with less guns in the game so we did 3,200 damage, 6 kills, 1,594 base XP. That's actually quite good. Um, our UDES 0303 did very well as well with 4,900 damage. So, and their SU-130 PM did really well too. You notice all the guys that pushed through had a very difficult time. The STR V103 did 800, the T95 did 195, you know, the E75 did okay, but he's an E75. The T832 that tried to cap didn't do so great, uh, although he did better than a lot of his team. So do not push that heavy side if you want to win games. You know, secure it. And then go back and try and reinforce another flank. You know, someone can stay and kind of hold position, but so you don't lose map position. But the bad, it's a bad idea to push through into any open flank. 27 shots fired, 19 hits, 16 pens, 3,200 damage, as we mentioned, and then 4,000 assists. So we were well over 7,000 combined in a tier 8. And I was wrong. We lost 14,000 credits. But whatever, that's fine. I've got some credits. I can deal with that. And it was a two times, so we ended up with 3,500 XP. So I appreciate you guys watching. Once again, happy Labor Day. Hope to catch you next time. Toaster out.